The last album to date is the first to come out as a soft machine album without the legacy yes. word in it. And a lot of people, including me actually, thought that was quite fitting because in a, in a sort of, uh, I don't know, roundabout way, uh, the, the, the band ended up reintroducing, as, as you were saying, not only loops, but the, the keyboard playing you're doing as well. Uh, and sort of ambient transitions and stuff. It sounds more like a Soft Machine album, I, I would say worthy of the name, but it, it makes sense, at least. And that seems to have been done in a non-calculated way. So it sort of converges the natural evolution of the band and the fact of, of playing on the name Soft Machine. That's what's been said, and I, I, I kind of agree with that. Is that your impression as well? Yes, I would say that the first steps in that direction definitely happened with the, like, the previous obviously legacy album, Burden of Proof, mm. which was the first time I think it, there was a Fender Rhodes in the studio and the first time there was a Fender Rhodes in Sovereign Legacy. Um, and I, th I, think that, I think the Fender Rhodes sound brings it very much into that world. So the kind of, you know, and then what you do with the Fender, there's a normal Fender Rhodes, but then once, as soon as you start having delays or wah-wah or the stuff that Rattlers used to do, what Rattlers used to do, which gave it that real um, stamp and sound, it kind of stops being another good jazz rock band and starts being something, to me, more interesting. I, I mean, I really like psychedelic world of 1967 and Source of All the Secrets and all that kind of thing and, and you know the loops and thing, the Terry Riley thing and all that, Mike Rackledge, the interesting sound, the systems music etc. So I, um, we started with a bit of that on Burden of Proof but ultimately that album, you know, didn't quite hit the mark. There were some good tracks I think. But it didn't quite hit the mark. Now, interesting, so before we said about, or I said, Sovereign Legacy, well, it's the same musicians and the same music, it doesn't have the same resonance, it doesn't have the same meaning. There are not many people who have a real affinity to Soft Machine Legacy. Well, a lot of people have a real affinity to Soft Machine, and Soft Machine Legacy is connected to Soft Machine because it's the legacy of Soft Machine with the people who were in Soft Machine. But it's not like it's Soft Machine Legacy. I'm really excited. So, we've been Soft Machine since 2015, 16, but to do an album, for me, probably more than the others, to do an album that says Soft Machine on the front, means something. I think it means something, because it's Soft Machine, and it means you're saying very clearly, we're go this, is, this is the same band that is Soft Machine from before. So I actually made a point, I made a point in the publicity for Hidden Details that this is the first Soft Machine album for 37 years since Landing of Cain. Because I kind of saw it like that. And I think, see I kind of think Soft Machine as an, as an entity beyond the musicians and the music is a thing and therefore you want to you want to do something worthy of the name, or you want you want to you want to go the extra mile, because people have a relationship with Soft Machine, whether it's the first album, whether it's Bundles, whether it's Alive and Well in Paris, whether it's the fourth album. But you're direct, you're, say, you're you're saying we are directly in line with that. Therefore, you know, I as someone who um, enjoys the whole writing and recording process. I was, you know, I wanted to go the extra mile and, and, and make it stand up with the best soft machine albums. Not the best soft machine legacy albums, I want to stand up with the best soft machine albums. So, um, yes, Fender Rhodes, yes, free improvisations that would go this way and that way, yes, um, the odd nod to the old repertoire. The odd nod to the old repertoire, the definite nod to. Um, the sonic explorations of Mike Rattledge, the whole intro, you know, introduction to Mount Rages, the whole you know cosmic tinkles that Sid Smith calls it, the kind of cascading, you know, echoing Fender Rhodes sounds. 
you know, to me that, I, I, I found that exciting. It's a, it's a richer musical palette than, you know, if you just have tenor saxophone, guitar, bass, drums, playing some charts. Hmm. So, um, yeah, in terms of what I brought to the table, I wanted to contribute to things that were strong pieces, you know, improvisations that have definite character. Um, there's a, a tune, Ground Lift, that, you know, comes from the same kind of world as as, as If, I, this kind of freeish, uh, almost unconnected musical area that you start. And just gradually, it just kind of goes from being all over to just coming together into its this kind of bass line. And as if it's just a bass line, but this one I thought, well, we'll get a nice bass line, so we'll kind of do this, and then we'll stick a tune on the end, just at the end. So it kind of builds until it coalesces into this solid thing, this kind of riff thing. And then just at the end, we'll stick a tune on top. So it just does that. And it gives it a lot of direction, I think. And it's something that, you know, John Etheridge, John Marshall, and Roy do amazingly well. And uh, you know, it's part of the soft thing. So I wanted, you know, as I say, the things I brought want, I wanted to kind of you know, draw on some of the classic soft machine areas or ideas, but with a you know, new slant, new sounds. And then, you know, like Breathe was uh, you know, the whole alto flute looping thing that I've you know, done a lot of. Um, you know, largely with sort of Robert Fripple with Cypher, but you know, if, if if Soft Machine has a sound world that involves you know, certain ambient soundscapes or looping soundscapes, I mean, you only have to look at Floating World, which was a series of kind of looping keyboard things with a slow flute. It's like, okay, well, this is this is the way I do it, so let's try this. And, it, and John Marshall had all sorts of interesting sort of wind chimes. Um, and gongs were on top, so we recorded it, and it felt it felt like it fitted. You know, I, I, if Soft Machine is a an area of a broad area of music, then I wanted to do stuff that was um, new and us, but resonated with the Soft Machine sound world.